testing, testing. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me and see me clearly? Right. Um, there should be this. There should be this chat box, right, where you guys can see the messages. Hey, Tefan, nice to see you again, man. Nice to see you again. Welcome back. <laughs> right, I see a couple of uh, familiar names here. I see Jody, Atuan again, right? Uh, we got Kok Wai Chan here again. Mervin, right? A couple of familiar names here. Right, nice to see you guys tune in, right? Okay, okay. That's nice. That's nice. Who is here for the first time, though? Yeah, who is here for the first time, right? Um, you can let me know where you guys are tuning in from. Right, it seems like a couple of you guys are probably tuning in from France. Right. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, good good to see you back here, Antoine. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Antoine, right? Uh, is it is it Antoine? Uh, I can't remember. I think it's French, right? Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, I took out some French in the past. <laughs> yeah, and then uh my French um colleagues who um who encouraged me to take it. Uh, in the past, they're like, oh yeah, you know what? Can you just stop it? Because you're butchering <laughs> my, my name, butchering the language, right? But yeah, I'd say, uh, Wai Chen, nice to see you back, right? Um, can you guys uh, be sure yeah, you guys are able to see my screen, right? You should be able to see, it's called the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass, right? You should be able to see my screen today, right? I'm going to cover a couple of um, key What's the word for you? Um, a couple of key links for you guys to take a look at. Uh, because it's been a while since we came back. We were supposed to launch a VIP room. Um, it's called the, the Traders Club sometime today. But it'll be delayed at least for another one or two more days. right? So maybe in next week's webinar, I should be able to show you guys uh, this nice little community trading room that um, Take Me has prepared for you guys. You'll be able to see me and the rest of my trading team inside. Right, it's a pretty fun place, right? But yeah, it's uh, it's just the last few bits of um the loose ends which are tying up, right? And um, I saw the landing page already. It's very nice, right? Yeah, so it should be released uh, pretty soon to you guys. All right, okay, yeah, it's nice to see you guys tuning in. Right, be sure to say hi. Right, you can see uh when you're sending the messages, right? There's this drop down that you can select to everyone, so you can everyone will be able to see your messages too. Right, so you know, sometimes when I'm answering a question, you know, uh, it's good to know what the question was. Right, so that is where you know, feel free to use the chat section, not the question and answer section. The chat section will be better. Yes, Muhammad, I mean, nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you tuning in too. Where are you guys tuning in from? May I ask? Right, um, I can see probably a few of you guys from Malaysia, um, Singapore, or Morocco. Right, a few guys from Morocco here. Right. I got guys from Ghana. Okay, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. London, London, Malaysia. Yeah, I kind of figured it was Malaysia. Right, South Africa. Okay, right. Uh, stream for South Africa too. Very nice, very nice. I'm guessing no one's from Singapore. <laughs> the closest you have around here is probably Malaysia or Indonesia. Right? And there might be a few of you guys from Indonesia. Oh, Sunny's from Singapore. Good stuff. Money is from India. Okay. Okay, all right. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time this evening or afternoon or morning, wherever you are, uh, to tune in. Right. I mean, these webinars are recorded, right? I But they might not be uploaded that fast. They might, it might take a while for TakeMe to upload it. Let me run through um, with you guys a couple of important links now that the majority of you guys have streamed in, right? First and foremost, uh, this webinar is, you know, disclaimer, this webinar is purely educational in nature. So nothing should be construed as investment or trading advice. Right, my Fibonacci explain, explanation rocks. Thank you very much, Wai Chan. Right, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you found it useful. Right, uh, we really, really go in depth. If not to use it properly, Fibonacci can really be a good tra uh, trading strategy from you. Uh, for you, Danilo, nice to see you tuning from Philippines too, and Rahim from Nigeria. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let me send you guys to a couple of links. Right, so um, take meal. Right, client tools webinars. Right, you can sign up for our upcoming webinar series over here. Um, it'll be the next four sessions. We'll be talking about trade management, right? A where is it? Yep, there we go over here. I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna give me the link. Right, I'm gonna send this to you guys. For those of you guys who have not registered yet, please go sign up for this today. We're gonna talk about idea and validation by our Yongting. Right, I'll be introducing him to you in a bit. Right, next week's session is live trading session. Very fun. Right, we really um, start looking for trades together, right? Then Young Team will cover the trading stop loss techniques, right? Today, idea and validation, very, very important lesson, right? Very important lesson because 
um, the concept behind idea and validation is that, you know, in trading, it's not only about how much money you make, right? It's how much losses you avoid, okay? For every loss that you avoid, it's equivalent to a profit that you make, right? So in trading, most of the time, people are just very um, obsessed, you know, with how do I make money? How do I hit that my take profit? How do I break even, right? That they don't pay enough attention to break even's ugly cousin, which is idea and validation, Right, because it, it, it goes against their you know their values, their idea and validation, which Yong Tin will be expanding a little bit more later, right? Is actually admitting when something is wrong, the idea is wrong, is invalidated, and you're trying to get out of it as soon as possible. It's not something which naturally sits with a lot of people because as us as humans, even me myself, right? Um, we want to believe we're right, right? And when something proves us wrong, you know, it's just very um discomforting. Right, it's not something which you can easily accept, right? So idea and validation, as much of it as as much as it is a trade management um, rule, uh, trade management strategy, right? It is also as uh, trading psychology uh, related, right? You need to come to terms that hey, I am wrong. This trade makes no sense now. I'm gonna try get out as soon as possible so that I can prevent my loss, right? So just something I can show you guys here. Right from a perspective, right. So you got a couple of trades, right? Let's just say you got two trade. I'm gonna pick a pen, right? You got you got two trading strategies, right? You got trading strategy A, you got trading strategy B, right? Trading strategy A, you know you have one trade which you have plus one, right? This one is also plus one, right? Plus one plus one. Another trade, you know, you guys know how to use break even, you know zero, right? This guy also uses um break even, right? And then this guy users uh, didn't use idea and validation, right? So they lose minus one over here, right? This one used idea and validation, you know, they got out a zero, right? And then, you know, you have another trade. No, okay, this is it, right? You have two trades, three trades, one profit, one break even, one idea and validation, okay? Now you notice the end result, right? This one ends the day with zero. This one ends the day with plus one. Okay, idea B over here, right, ends the day with plus one. That means this, this strategy A, right, you need to make up, right, just the very next trade. If you have one more plus one, right, this will go to plus two, right, this will go plus two, this one only go to plus one. You notice that you need one profitable trade to make up for one unprofitable trade. So for every trade that you avoid losing, for every loss that you avoid, rather, is one profit made. You must think about that. For every loss that you avoid is one profit made. Okay? So it's very important for us to try to avoid losses. Okay? And that is what today's webinar is about. In fact, in the whole series of trade management, right, I say this is one of the most important ones because it's easy to move something to break even. Break even is where you move your stop loss, right? You know, when you take a trade, you got your entry and let's just say you're buying and then you got to take profit and you got your stop loss, right? Break even is easy. This comes to here, right? The ugly cousin, of stop or break even is moving this to here. How you decide when to do that, the psychology behind it, the examples, right? I'll be leaving it to Yong Jin to explain it to you. But let me assure you, this is a very, very important concept when it comes to trading. Now, some of you guys might want to know what are the some of the other topics that we covered, YouTube, Tech Meal, right? I'm going to send you the playlist, right? And we want to head to here, the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. This is the link you want to go to. Right, and you notice that we had previously covered what you know. When should you break even? Are you getting stopped out too often? Right, these are the other two sessions in a four-part series on trade management. So if you are a little bit confused on what break even is, stop loss and take profit placement, please go watch this uh, webinar. It's all over here for you to take a look at. Right, it really really help you to become a better trader. Okay, remember that in trading, right, it's not it's very different from the world of academia. It's not how much you learn, right? So a lot of people struggle with this, right? They, they believe that because they're very smart people, the more that they study, the better that they do. But in trading, it's very different, right? It's not like school where you study very hard and you do very well in exams, right? Trading can be completely different. You can study very hard and you can lose a lot of money. I'm sure some of you guys have had experience. You spend so much time studying a trading strategy and still lose money, right? And it's because in the world of trading, you can run full speed in the wrong direction.
okay? That is a very dangerous thing. You know, imagine you're, you know, Usain Bolt, you know, you're, you're running on, in, your, in a competition. What's the worst thing to do is not to just run full speed, but to run in the wrong direction. Everyone's running forward, you're running backwards. You need to turn around, make up the ground before you can catch up with them, right? So in trading, a lot of wrong advice out there, a lot of wrong teachings out there. So it's very dangerous when you run full speed in the wrong direction. Rahim, I can see you raise up your hands. If there's one thing I want to share with you guys, don't hesitate to just ask questions. Send it in the chat. We literally have another screen open here by the side monitoring the chat coming through. So if you have questions, just send it through. We'll do our best to answer them. All right, because we rarely ever have time to answer questions towards the end of the webinar. So just feel free to send it, right? We'll do our best to take care of your questions, all right? So yeah, you know, go learn here, right? Tickmill has um, spent a lot of effort and resources to put together one of the best trading uh, strategies out there, right? Or rather risk trading education costs. This is better. This YouTube playlist is better than what you can get out there for $5,000, $10,000. Those courses you see on Instagram, you know, people selling courses. What you learn from here, right, is better than that, okay? You know, we are... Um, later we're doing the introduction, but about award-winning research team, really good, uh, really good and smart people around here to teach you to be better traders. So take the opportunity to learn from us. Okay, now, um, now without further ado, I'm just going to introduce our uh, our host. We need to scroll back one time to the agenda, right? It will be Yongjin. He'll be taking over in a bit, right? He's uh he's our newest member here at Everest Fortune Group. So you know we are finalists at Everest Fortune Group. We are finalists for best. Where's my mouse? Yeah. Best FX Research 2019, 2020, 2021. And also finally, so Best Equity Research 2020 and 2021, right? So we regularly we regularly work with the major financial institutions uh, to tell them, help them forecast where the markets are heading. But we have a special partnership with TechMill where you guys are bringing you guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the stuff that take your trading to the next level. But of course, you know, it requires not only a willing teacher, but a willing student. Right, so please ask as many questions as you can so they can really grasp the concept of uh, idea and validation and this advanced trade management style. Okay, now without further ado, I'm going to pass the time on to Yong Jin, who will now be showing you the agenda for today. Yong Jin, over to you. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Desmond. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hi, hi. Hey, hey thank you. Hey, guys, guys. Welcome, welcome. Wow. Okay, my name is Chen Yongjing. Okay, and that's me right there. I think my hairstyle is a bit messy. So right now, I just got a haircut, so it's looking quite good, looking G. Okay, today I'll be presenting the Ateno, the what is a trade, the entire structure of a trade, what is the idea in validation, and where do you place the idea in validation? Well, for this, for this specific for this specific idea in validation, everybody got their own trading style. So what do you mean by their own trading style? You guys, sometimes you guys use MACD or you guys use the RSI. Hey, Jamiru. Jamiru. Okay, yes. Hi, good day, good day. And I'll show you guys examples of idea in validation in action. Just let me know in chat, what kind of methods do you guys use for trading? What kind of methods? Some people use RSI, some people use MACD, some people draw, they use smart money concepts. Some people use that. Have you guys heard about it? Smart money concepts is pretty trending right now. This, if not, I can show you guys later on. Divergence, yes. Muhammad, do you use divergence? Nice, nice. Many, many trading methods everyone are using. Okay, let me move on first to the anatomy of a trade. Well, first, we have the basics. You guys know what is the entry, the stop loss, the take profits, the break even, partial profit, trailing stop, and idea invalidation. Hey, hey, uh, Joe Burtz. Have I pronounced your name right? Okay, you said the RSI in combination with MACD and three moving averages. Okay, that is also good because you are using multiple types of indicators for your confluence and confirmation to your trade. So that's very good that you actually look across multiple levels. So for trailing stop, many there are, I don't think many people know about that or know how to use it properly. 
Okay, I'll let me explain what is a trailing stop in the anatomy of a trade. So, a trailing stop is a special type of trade order that it moves relative to price fluctuations. So, it's like a forever moving stop loss. So, let's say you enter an entry right. Let's say you enter your entry right here. The trailing, I'll just type T, trailing SL is right here. But when your trade moves higher and higher, your trailing stop loss will increase also. But it will not move lower. So in a way, you can take some profit right here in, in an event that the price actually comes down to hit the trailing stop loss. So it will never move downwards, but the trailing stop loss, stop loss will continue moving with the price. Okay, moving on, what is an idea in validation? Okay, everybody, everybody have probably, before you enter, usually need your entry, your stop loss, and then your profit level. Then everybody, everybody has their own methods for determining their directional bias, their time, what time to enter, uh, the, the, vote, the volatility, expectations, all kind of stuff. Okay, after... I'm not sure if everybody does this, but some people actually use fundamental and technical analysis together and they are ready to mark their entry and their exit levels. And just remember to check your risk to reward ratio. That is very, very important. Minimally, you want a one to one risk to reward ratio. Also, do use proper positioning size. So to enter a trade, how, what percentage of your account do you guys risk? Let me know in chat how many percents. I've asked some people in real life, in person, not in real life. But, oh, that's very, very good. 1%. 1%. Any other, any, any of you guys, other people, do you guys do 1%? Okay, 5%. Kabza, 5%. Muhammad, 2%. Well, there's no right or wrong. It's fine as so. Just take note that if you risk 5%, you need 20 trades. Okay, I, I wouldn't want to jinx you, but I'm just giving an example. If you risk 5%, it takes 20 trades, roughly 20 trades to blow the account. But if you risk 1%, it takes 100 trades to actually blow the account. Well, please only use 1%. Please do that. I'm personally using 1%. It helps a lot with my psychology. In the past, I actually used 3%. And back then, I did not have a proper trading plan. So I continued blowing accounts after accounts. So what? So let me get back to the main topic. I think I'm getting off track here. Okay, what is idea in validation? Okay, idea in validation is placed before your stop loss. So it's a general idea. So let's say you are buying. Let's say you are in a buy. You want to buy, let me draw out. Let's say you, are, you enter a buy right here. Okay, I wouldn't say that. Your stop loss is here, SL. But you entered a buy here. A buy. But the trade is going in your direction. But then you, you just want to let it run. And then you are not moving your stop loss. But let's say the price comes down, goes up higher. But all of a sudden, what happens? price comes down and it breaks this level. So it is, okay, long on NZD USD as an example. Okay, I'll take a look on that. Is it a live trade you are taking right now? So let's say that this structure got broken. So what we are forming, it's a lower high. So it's lower high. Then this is your idea invalidation area. So you can choose to Close your trade to have a small little profit right here from your buy entry upwards. Or you can wait for the retracement and close it right here. If you do not have an idea in validation level, you let your trade run. Let me draw the same thing out. Your SL, your buy, your buy limit hit, price goes up, comes down, creates a lower high, and then goes back up, you have it running because you thought 
wow, I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to make price is going to go up, hit my take profit. My take profit is right there, looking good. So looking good, looking good. Now that you left your chart, and then what happens? When you came back, you saw this, but then you did not touch anything. Without an idea in validation, your price comes down and eventually clears your stop loss. Having an idea in validation helps you to reduce the risk that you are that you have on your accounts. So let's say I, I wanted to buy here. Let's take a look. An example, SL, my buy. This is another example. But price goes up and comes down. So right now my account, my trade is in a loss. So if it actually clears my SL right here, it would have been a 1% loss. But with the idea in validation in place, I noticed that my idea got invalidated. I am not right anymore. I cannot just force the trade, you know. So when there's idea in validation, I either close my trade right here as soon as it breaks to a lower high or I make a retracement and close it at break even. So if I close it at break even, the only thing that I have to pay is the commission. Would you rather pay commission? Let's say one lot, would you rather pay $10 commission? Or would you rather one got 1% 1 for 10k account? Would you rather lose $100? With an idea in validation in place, you would have lost only 0.1% of your accounts on a $10,000 account. But for this $100, it hits your stop loss, you lose the entire 1%. So an idea in validation is very, very important. You have to take notes, that's all. Many people do not have that in place. They just, they just leave their trade to run. They go, they go and sleep overnight, hoping that their trade hits take profits. So many times in the past, when I, when I did not learn or did not have an idea in validation in place, I lost many, many trades. I already saw that my trade was in a loss, yet I did not close the trade. And I let it hit my stop loss. So, moving on. Moving on. Okay, here's an example where we can place an idea in validation. So let's say we have an, an entry right here. We are looking to buy. Let's say we are looking to buy upwards. But what happens next? Looking to buy, take profits right here. And then the chart, con we, we actually draw a, a few Fibonacci lines. I'm sure that some of you guys have seen Desmond's webinar on how to use Fibonacci and how he used in, uh, confluence, especially lines that intersect like this a Fibonacci line drawn from here to here and from here downwards to here. So you actually see the, there is the 50% Fibonacci line and the other 50% Fibonacci line that are intersecting very, very nicely. And then at the bottom, we also have the 127.2% Fibonacci extension and the minus 27.2% Fibonacci expansion line intersecting very, very nicely. So for this area, we can set this as the stop loss, as the stop loss area. But hold on, hold on before we continue moving on to the next slide. Okay, this area I just marked out. Okay, we have the stop loss slightly below the intersection. So where do we get? This is just an example. There are many, many methods. I'm just showing you guys one method. So moving on, this is our idea in validation level. So how do we properly manage that? So we are actually looking to, if price goes up, we hit our entry, but price continues to go down, continues to go down. And then it taps into our idea in validation level. This is where you start to get out of the trade. You just want to exit it. You do not, you can it, you don't want to close it right here. So we can set our trade to break even. Take a look. Price hit our idea in validation and it bounced back up to entry without hitting our stop loss. And then by then, we would have set break even right here. It taps into our break even. And we paid, let's say, on the one lot. 
one gods, we just paid the ten dollar commission, and then moving on, take profit. We move our take profit level to break even. Outset break even, but we'll take a look. If we did not manage our trade, did not manage our trade, idea invalidation. Let's say we do not have that in place. We let it run, hoping wow, it's back at our it's back at our entry level. Price is probably going right. So you just want it to continue, continue going up to the take profits level. But that is wrong already. You guys are just clinging on to the trade. You don't want to let go, you think that you are right. But as Desmond just now mentioned, as humans, we tend to always want to be right. So I guess that's is that might be an ego issue. Ego. So last time I had a wrong trade, I normally do not want to close my trade. I let it run. I always think that I'm right. It's very, very difficult to just admit that we are wrong. It's very, very difficult for humans to admit that we are wrong. Especially if, not sure about you guys, but sometimes I take quite a while. Maybe I take 15 minutes, plan out a trade, draw some lines, draw here, draw there. In the example, it is also a lower low invalidation. Yes. Yes. Hey, Muhammad, are you using smart money concepts? Because I think that term is that, that term is used a lot in smart money concepts. So yeah, it is, as what Muhammad has mentioned, it is a lower low. Lower? Okay, it's not a lower low. It's a lower, yeah, lower low. Okay. So if we have not managed that trade without the idea in validation, without the area in place, let it run, and then break even, it, we could have break even, but it hits our entire stop loss. And we could have lost more. Why we could have lost more? Let me get the eraser out. Because of this area. This area, we do, we do not know that this might be the cause of a news, news event. We could have slippage. We could have lost more than 1% of our accounts. Okay, I like the lower low or higher high as an invalidation points. Hey, Joberts and Mohammed, do you guys actually use this smart money concepts? Because I see, I see like it's, it's, it's very, very commonly used in smart money concepts. People use that as an invalidation points. Same as me. So I want to know how many of you guys use smart money concepts. Not yet trying to learn the concepts. Well, you can learn it from YouTube. There are many YouTubers that are doing it for free. You do not have to pay for a mentorship for that, you do not have to do that. Many YouTubers are teaching for free. So let's move on to the live chart. So I'll show you guys some ideas. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it moving. Okay, let me load my layout. Yeah, I think I got to use the other layout, the webinar layout. Okay, let me clear the charts. Okay, so I usually trade euro dollar. Okay, you see, uh, let me answer the question first. Okay, Jobert said, you are not familiar with it. For you, you is simply momentum analysis. If the momentum change and it's confirmed by a lower low or higher high, then I have to accept that I traded in the wrong direction. Yes, at least you found out your trading strategy. You know your ideal invalidation level. So many people, they, have, they do not have a trading plan. So without a trading plan, trading plan first. If you have no trading plan, you cannot have a ideal invalidation. You cannot have that if you do not have your trading plan. So it's very good that you actually know when you are wrong. So... Same, same as me, I actually rely a lot on the higher high and lower low. All this kind of stuff for my idea in validation. So for this specific example, I'll be using smart money concepts. So for my personal trading strategy, I actually use smart money concepts with the combination of Wyckoff. So that is my personal trading method. So Wyckoff is just the... So I can kind of 
take a look where the market is at, whether the market is accumulating to go higher or... <coughs> okay, I do apologize for that. Okay, whether it's accumulating to go higher or it's accumulating for a distribution. So Wyckoff actually tells me which part of the markets I am at before I implement these smart money concepts. So let me clear this entire chart out. For me personally, I only trade the euro dollar. So let me type out in chats in case you guys have not seen that. So I'll be trading the euro dollar most of the time. So normally how I trade, how I start my trading is, okay, let me get, uh, okay, how I start my trading before I start the day, I start on the daily charts. What I like to do is, Hey, I think you have a question. Hey, God, Godwin. Godwin, do you have a question? Feel free to ask in the chats. I will try my best to answer you. Okay, so before I start, this is how I trade. And I will show you guys my idea in validation using smart money concepts. So what I like to do is I like to paint a picture. What is happening? What is happening on the daily charts? Everything happens for a reason, right? right? So you can see right why this area, why this area bounced why this area bounced. Everything has a reason. It has a reason. It has to have a reason. So using smart money concepts, what we look out, what we look out for is liquidity. Why price went down there? What did price clear? So I like to imagine, I like to imagine that there's many, many weeks like this area right here. Price came down. Just imagine it, they are clearing out everybody's stop loss. So I like to imagine as that, the market come down, clear everybody's stop loss before it gains enough liquidity to continue moving higher. Comes down, same thing, it clears out the stop loss, bounce and continue higher. So how do we phrase that? How do we phrase that properly? Yes, you can call it a demand zone. Very good, very, very good. You can call it a demand zone, but... We can also call it a liquidity zone. So I like to mark out, draw a straight line, and I like to mark out as the sell side liquidity. Zooming in, zooming in. Why, why do I draw that area? So I'll zoom in very, very closely on the daily. You can see that price actually came down this area just to clear out all these weeks right here before it moved up higher. So I'm just zooming in just to just to show you guys. The candle literally just came down just to clear it. So I like to mark out such areas as the sell side liquidity, where liquidity was taken. So to continue, I like to also mark out this area. You can take a look. Price actually came down just to clear the liquidity. You can take a look. I zoom in very, very closely just to show you guys. I know it's not ideal to show the charts very close, but zooming out, you can take a look. Price continued clearing, clearing liquidity before it continued moving upwards. But same thing, I also want to paint a picture. Why did price reject this area? I'm sure you guys will call it the, for smart money concepts, you guys like to call it the, probably the supply zone. But to account for that, I can draw out. I can just label this area as the, is the red area cross price is reversing down. I it out as the hitch as the daily supply zone. Inside center. So, so if you notice so far, I, I like to keep my chart very, very clean. And I and one thing you guys also noticed, I do not rely on any indicators for my trade. There's zero indicators. I'm not using any. So a, prob a probable area that we, are, might, we might be looking at for price to come down is at this area right here. So I'll change this area to green. I'll call it the daily. Daily demand zone inside center. 
So you just want a very, very clean chart. You just want to know the rough picture, where is price heading. So right now, with that being drawn out, everything is clean. I know that price, create liquidity, bounced, came back down, retracement, create liquidity, went up. It hits a daily supply zone, a strong zone before it reverse downwards. And right now, we are just forecasting, just giving a general idea on where price might head to. So that's why we have the daily demand zone in place. So moving on after the daily, after I've painted a picture, I will mark out the daily high and the previous daily low. Previous, we are talking about the previous one. Same thing, these areas act as a very important support and resistance zone. So marking that out, I'll write it as the previous daily high. And then the, the next area, I will mark it as the previous daily low. We just have a very clean chart so we know exactly where price is heading. So moving on, four hours charts. Once we are done with the daily, we move on to the four hours charts. Then me being me, I got some kind of OCD. So I like to drag this. You can see it's out. So I like to pull it in, grab. So you notice, same thing. There's a picture being painted on the one on the four hours chart. Price went down and cleared the previous daily low. Okay, a demand zone. Okay, you want to be, you want me to repeat the demand zone. All right, I will do it. So demand zone where is a place where we are looking for possible buyers, B U Y E R S, or, or a possible. It also can be caught as a possible buy area. A demand zone where you can expect price to reach. So probably we can expect price to hit this area before we look for a long. If you are a swing trader, maybe you guys might be looking at this location, but for me, I am an intraday trader. So normally I look for a scalp. So I like to enter a buy or a short sell at areas of demand or supply. And then I close my trade out within the same day. I do not want any fundamental news to mess up the trades. Okay, moving on to the back to the four hours. Let me clear that. So we have painted a we have painted a story. What happens on the daily now? How do you determine the area and not higher or lower? Because I'm determining I'm determining that area due to the imbalance area. We are looking at, at an area where price did not tap into yet. So currently we are in a market imbalance zone where price previously did not enter. Let me draw it out clearly. So this area right here, we are currently in the imbalance zone. Please, can you throw more lights on liquidity? I think it's easier to be to show on the one minute. I'll, I usually am on the five minutes, 15 minutes, and even on the one minute chart during my trading. Why am I using the one minute chart? I use that area to spot liquidity. I want to know where I can expect price to go. I like to refine. So my motto for trading is, Precision, I want very, very precise trades. Precision, liquidity, and psychology. Why psychology? Without a good and strong psychology, I might anyhow enter trade. Yes, one minute chart for precise entry only. You are right. I like the very, very precise entry. It feels very good, you know, when you enter on a very, very precise entry. You just want the price to tap and go. So liquidity, we can see it as on the, maybe on the one hour. This is also counted as a liquidity area where price, we have multiple weeks right here. Weeks, weeks, price came down to clear all of this out, to X everything out before it bounce up on the hourly chart. So I like to use liquidity a lot in my trading, a lot. So you can see this area. Also, look at this area. 
where has price curved liquidity before it bounced? I'll draw it out. Then you guys can kind of understand where I'm looking at. And see, price actually came down to clear all this liquidity. It cleared everything, cleared, cleared it out, and then it bounced. It went higher. Same thing, just an example. Liquidity can be seen right here. Sell side liquidity. Yes, hey, very nice. You, you're talking about imbalance. So I think if you are talking about imbalance, have you guys have you guys watched ICT in a circle trader? So liquidity is right here. Equal low, equal lows, price came down. Create the liquidity, go higher, came down, create all this liquidity out right here, create and bounce higher. So right now, the imbalance, why did price come back here also? Adding confluence to the liquidity. This is a bit technical now. So we are looking at the imbalance area as what Muhammad has mentioned. So we have an imbalance area right here. Let me mark it out in grey. We are looking at this area where previously price has not tapped into. So we do not like it. Do you like it if I know if you are if you are in a buy or you are in a sell, you would rather the price hit your take profit fast. So let's say you're in a buy, you want it to faster hit your take profit fast. But the results of that hitting your take profits, this entire area, this is called a market imbalance, like what Muhammad has mentioned. So this area price always has to come back down to clear. Oh, ICT, inner circle trader. So that guy that, that guy talks a lot about the market imbalance or the fair value gap. So I personally did implement his trading styles on the market imbalance into my personal trades. And it's working pretty well. So we have that in place. We could probably, we might have to see the news. I think there is a, there is a fresh CPI release on the euro dollar. So I press none, euro USD. Okay, it's pretty good. So we can actually see the euro probably going up since it's better than the past months. It's better than expected also. The fresh CPI, the core CPI is also better than forecasted. So we might be able to see price heading upwards, but to where? Let's say price continues going up. So we can actually see this area is also a liquidity zone. It also can be seen as a liquidity zone where we can look for price to clear to the upside with the previous daily high and all this liquidity resting right here. You can read more about liquidity on YouTube also. It might take some time for you to spot it, but liquidity is very, very important. So let's let's have an example. Let's let's say that I'm I am looking to let's say I was looking to short short to this demand zone. So just now I saw you guys actually mention on the you guys have an invalidation. So let's say I'm looking for a short right here. Let me get the thing out. The short, where is it? Where is it? Sorry, this is not my account. So okay, found it. So let's say I enter a short here with my stop loss, let's say at the previous day high. Double top and double bottom is also a liquidity, is also a liquidity zone, right? Yes, you are right. Yes, it's counted as a liquidity zone because for double top to happen, they have an equal high. So in the future, we can look for price, we can look for a buy, for price to clear the equal highs resting right here. Liquidity. Double bottom is the same thing. There is a equal low. We can look for price to potentially clear to the bottom. So yes, you are right. You are pretty well versed in the liquidity areas too. Very, very good. Hello, sir. What is smart money concept about Godwin? Okay, but smart money concept is, is I would say it as a 
refined support and resistance zone. A pretty refined one. So you can search more about it on YouTube and you can have very clean charts just by using smart money concepts. You don't have all the RSI, you don't have the RSI or at the bottom, you do not have none of that. You just have a chart based on your own drawing. Okay, so let's say that I'm entering a shot right here. I let's say I enter a shot right here. Wow, I'm looking for price to go down and hit my take profits, maybe a demand zone right here. So I can actually refine my demand zone by drawing a bottom candle right here. I'll type it as a refined one hour demand zone. So maybe it's a one hour a refined one hour demand zone. With my, let's say I have a stop loss right here, but okay, I wouldn't say that because there's liquidity. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have a there's liquidity right here, equal highs, so I wouldn't want my stop loss to be there. So maybe I set my stop loss to here, one to one. Let's say just just a quick example on the one hour chart. So one to one, right here, an ideal invalidation you guys mentioned of a higher high and a higher low. So my ideal invalidation level would be, I probably might want to set an alert. So trading view, you know those free accounts, you guys have one single alert you can use for free. So maybe idea invalidation, I can set my idea invalidation level to be an early idea invalidation might be here. Might be here, where we, we can look for price to break higher. To form a higher high. So at this point, let's say my idea invalidation is in place. Pause. Idea invalidation. So with my idea invalidation in place, I would have started to manage my trade. So I would either set my trade to break even, hopefully for price to come down, tap into my break even, close, and I pay commission, or I wait for the retracement and then I close at the next demand zone or imbalance. So I would probably lose lesser if I close it right here or here just by paying the commission. So if I close it right here, close it right here, wait for the retracement back down, I would probably lose maybe 0.2% of my account. 0.2%. But Let's say I did not have the idea invalidation in place. Same thing, price forms a higher high, but it's already invalidated, yet we are holding on to the trade. Well, price continue moving, moving, and all of a sudden, it hit our stop loss. We would have lost the entire 1% because we did not manage our trade. We, are, we were sticking very, very closely. Just because price continue moving up, we did not invalidate it yet. Then we saw this area. Wow, you almost hit my stop loss, but not yet. And it's coming down. And then you are just hoping. If you are hoping for a trade to go right, you are just praying. If you are praying during a trade, you are hoping during a trade, you know you are wrong already. You are wrong already. If you are praying, you are, you are just you know, closing the chart, hoping, yes, let's go away. I'll go away for one hour. Hopefully the trade goes right. That is already wrong without an idea in validation. So last time with, without an idea in validation, let's say the price was going up already right here and I'm already in a loss. I would close my computer screen, I'll walk away and I'll just like, hey, please, 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 please hope that my trade is right. The moment you are doing that kind of thing, you are already wrong and it's a very wrong trading style. Why would you be praying when the data is right in front of you, in front of the screen? You already have the real life data that your trade is, let me get it out. You already have real life data that your idea in validation has been hit. So it's a definite area that you already know that you are wrong. Start to manage your trade to break even, either to break even or close somewhere here, lose lesser money than you would have held to stop loss. Back then, without an idea in validation area, I know some of you guys, definitely, definitely some of you guys, you would have a, your stop loss is right here. But when price goes near your 
stop loss, you guys start to do this. You guys start to go to your meta trader. Wow, you start to increase your stop loss, try to pull it higher. Oh, my stop loss is here. But price continues going up. Your, your original stop loss was here. But it by then, it would have hit your stop loss, but you continue holding on to your trade. And you keep pulling up your stop loss. By then, your risk to reward is already in a negative. Take a look, it's at 0 0.66. Guys, continue holding, but price continues to go up. And then what you guys do? I know many, many beginner traders, they will completely remove the stop loss. So they have no stop loss in place. They'll get the price run. Then they're just hoping, hoping. Hopefully, maybe their price can come back down and hit their break even. Always have a stop loss in place too. And only risk 1% for your psychology. Okay, Mohammed, you ask how to determine which high to consider as invalidation because we could break the previous high and still we are in a downtrend. So what you are looking is a top-down analysis. So you start to look at whether the, for this area, is the four hours high. But if you are looking right here, we are just looking at the one hour high, one hour low, one hour high, one hour low. So it differs. It's top-down analysis. You just got to start looking, start to look at the higher time frames before you head downwards. If you start looking at the one hour, you do not know where is the daily high, where is the daily low, all these kind of things. Four hours high, four hours low, you can't tell. So on the four hour chart, it probably looks like that. It might look like that. But on the one hour chart, you're looking at like that only. So always do take note of these high areas and the low areas. Okay, this is your first time joining. What do you use to confirm your entries? Well, for my personal trading style, I'm not sure if every, everybody trades like me, so I like to wait for price to probably build, uh, break the previous daily low or the previous daily high. And then what I like to do is for price to go up and break our structure before I look for a sell. Sell, stop loss, head downwards. So I look for price to come back down into the range area. So I like to trade, I like to trade, uh, what do you call it? Breaking previous daily low, I'll start to look for a buy or breaking previous daily high, I try to look for a sell back in. It's a bit technical because I, I, I'm start, I start to use things like market imbalance and I start to look for discounted area, discounted price areas where I use the Fibonacci. So I start to get the 50% area. So let's say, let's take that into place. So let's say I'm looking for 50% area within this daily demand zone. So if I'm looking for a discounted price model, I'm looking for price to hit into the 50% zone. So below the 50% area, it's a discounted zone, but above the 50% area, it's a, it's not a discounted zone, it's a premium pricing zone. So you guys, so yeah, you guys can actually start to work on smart money concepts on YouTube. Hopefully you guys can learn a lot more on that and help to improve with your trading. Okay, uh, Ignatius, you ask, it's your first time joining this webinar. You are a newbie in Forex trading. What steps does a learner need to become a profitable trader? Okay, you cannot expect to become a profitable trader because actually more than 95%, where's the percentage sign? 90, more than 95% of traders fail. And then they quit more than 95%. Since, since I started trading, I've seen many, many of my childhood friends that were very, very determined in trading, want to be profitable. But after one year, one and a half year, they quit because they could not see the profit. So always expect, I always like to tell people, always expect to lose money. Always expect to lose money within the first two years of trading or the first year of trading. Always must expect to lose money. The moment you are expecting to earn money, it's already wrong. It's already wrong because you are chasing the money. 
you are not chasing to trade properly. You are not you are not learning. You are just hoping to oh I enter one lot, having ten pips I'll make a hundred dollars, but your risk to reward is very bad. So let's say you have a zero point five risk to reward to make that one hundred dollars. You are losing two hundred dollars. Thanks very much for the explanation. Yes, always do do expect to lose money. You do not expect, never ever expect to make money within the first year. Never do that. Can you point us to one or two YouTube channels where we can learn smart money concepts? So much noise on YouTube with, with respect to learning. Okay, I don't think I'm able to share those YouTube channels. So maybe I'll just mention it out. I'll just mention, mention it out. I did mention Inner Circle Trader. Yes, we list everything for free for you guys to learn on YouTube. He doesn't charge anything. You guys can take a look. He has many episodes. Okay, that is the loss. That, that loss is the cost of learning. Yes, you are right. But that loss is not the cost of learning if you repeat the same mistakes over and over again without learning and keep losing to the same type of trade. So if you guys want to take a look at how I actually use the smart money concepts, just you can you guys can actually take a look. Home. You guys can take a look on this is my profile. So this is my profile. That is me right there. You guys can take a look. So I actually did a potential forecast for the euro dollar last week. So I wrote it on the 22nd. I updated. So I actually wrote it on the 22nd October. I wrote it on the Friday once the market has closed on the Saturday. In fact, I was expecting price to bounce into the fair value gap before it hits the this is quite technical the unmitigated fair value gap i even mentioned the exact area 1.00863 take a look it's right here let's take a look whether my forecast was right good take a look price bounce into the my fair value gap area went up it tapped extremely extremely inside my 1.00863 area before it reflected back down. So this was the forecast that I did last week before the trading week started. And it hit my take profits perfectly before it went back down. Yeah, so this was a forecast that I did. Euro USD potential forecast. So looking forward to the which news have high impact on the USD. So you have the NFP coming this Friday. NFP coming this Friday. So I actually also had a Euro USD potential forecast earlier on. I wrote it five hours ago. So I was I was busy. So I actually took some time. Somebody did message me in my personal trading view account. They actually asked me, oh, can you do a quick Euro USD forecast? And I just did a quick one. I'm not sure if I'm right. Just not sure. Everyone can be wrong. I'm I'm wrong sometimes too. So if I post on trading view, I do hope that I'm right. But if I'm wrong, well. It's embarrassing, I guess, but it's fine. It's all part and parcel of trading. We cannot be 100% right all the time. So let's take a look. I was forecasting price to, to potentially head downwards from the earlier area. Okay, price did head down, but it cleared the previous daily goal before it bounced up. So yeah, if you guys want to support me, maybe you guys can follow me on my account, Dutch Tongs. Well, I wouldn't promote it anymore. I wouldn't promote. I'll just I'll just showing you guys why smart money concepts is very, very useful. Just showing you guys. How do you know the best value best fair value gap to look out for? I always look at the fair value gap on the larger time frame. On the daily, the daily fair value gap is very, very strong. Same goes with the weekly. I always focus on the larger time frame, larger time frame fair value gaps before I go down lower. So yeah, I do implement ICT's fair value gap to my smart money concepts trading. Okay, thanks so much. No problem. Do check out Inner Circle Trader on YouTube. Okay, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask me in chat. I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you guys some time to to ask me some questions. I'll try my best to answer you guys. Else, I will be ending this session. Any more questions? Just ask away, guys. Just ask. Just ask any questions. Can you have a quick go analysis? I think I did have one. I did wrote it already. 
So today I was I was pretty neutral on go. I haven't touched yet those stones. I think I wrote it already. Hope the video will be shared. Yes, I do. I do hope it will be shared. As Desmond mentioned earlier on, it might take a while for them to upload. Yes, study smart money concepts. Yes, please do. It might help a lot. So for the gold potential forecast, I was pretty neutral on it. So I was looking for the price to probably come down to this H4 fair value gap, or if it breaks out of this range, it might go to the H4 fair value gap right here at the top or the bottom. So let's take a look. I haven't I haven't taken a look at gold yet, but let's take a look. Keep price is continue heading downwards. We might actually see price hit the H4 fair, fair value gap. We might not. So I'm not I'm not in any trade at the moment. I'm pretty busy today. So there was quite a lot of work for me to do. So yeah. What time do you publish the daily analysis? Oh, I actually do it only when I am free. I do not do it all the time. I do not do it all the time and I do it I do it in my own free time. So whenever I'm free, I just do it. But I will try my best to do weekly. So maybe before the market opens on Saturday or Sunday, I'll try my best to write a quick weekly analysis on the larger time frame using smart money concepts. Okay. Okay, you guys, do you guys have any more questions? Hey, no problem, Sean. No problem. Thanks very much for the support. Thank you very much. Well, any more questions? I'll give you guys maybe a, a quick 20 seconds. 20, 30 seconds at 6. At in one minute time, less than a minute time, you guys can ask. I use diversions, but sometimes I don't know when the price will bounce. Hey, sorry, Muhammad, I do not use diversions. I do not use that. I do apologize on that. I truly appreciate it. No problem. I do hope to host more live session where we can start to find some live trades. Some live trades. So if you're if you're trading, always do plan your trade properly. Everything draw out nicely. For me, I like the precision. So I actually move a lot into the one minute. I'll start to mark out all the zones. Everything will be nicely in place before I enter a trade. I I can even have four days where I do not even enter a single trade. Well. Is there, if there are no further questions, I do thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you very much. And I, I, and I really like to share my knowledge with you guys. So yeah, do check out on Smart Money Concepts. I do hope you guys can learn more and you know reduce your risk in trading. Hey, Derek, you said thanks. Jody, thanks. Doge Stonk. Yes, yes, yes. I'll just open it one last time before I end the webinar. Just enter in chat. Okay, I just I just sent the link to the chat. Thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Chen Yongjing, and I hope to host more Take Me webinars and share my knowledge with you guys. I appreciate the support. Hey, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Hopefully see you guys in the next in the next webinar. I hope to re to remember some of you guys' names. Hey, bye Hanson. Bye. Bye, Paul. Bye, Marcus. Bye. Bye, everyone. Hope you guys have a good day. Safe trading. Bye, Derek. Bye, Cat Cat Leo. Photo. <laughs> I, I do apologize. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Hey, bye, Donda. Bye, Singnu. Bye, Mile. Bye, Danilo. Bye, Paul. Bye bye. Bye, Godwin. Bye. Bye, guys.